like we were proper proper in a relationship um and we were obviously talking about marriages and raising a family mm. um and it's it's only right that if she's she had met my family she you, you know hers. yeah it was only right that i met hers and because the parents could not come to kenya i had to come here and because i was already denied a visa applying for another one was probably going to be denied as well and we thought if we get married you know i'll just come for the a, a few months and then go back home mm -hmm. i'll still have a visa anyway yeah, yeah. um but i got here and then I changed my mind. When someone is pregnant for your baby, yeah. would you rather they tell you or are they justified to keep it away from you? They are not. Do you think they in have my opinion, uh -huh. In my opinion, I feel like it's best to let me know. I know that, um, especially in, in, in the society that we come, in, we come from in Kenya, there are a lot of women who would tell a man, I have, I'm pregnant with your child, and mm -hmm. the man would be like, yeah, yeah no, 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 that's, mm -hmm. that's not me. I'm, I'm, I've never even had sex in my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's my mind. Hello, good morning and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, whoever said dreams are valid meant it. My guest today is obviously breaking barriers, but I love that he's such an incredible single, an incredible single dad. And I was just scrolling through his in Instagram today. And honestly, I really do appreciate the kind of person he is. As you all know, I'm in London and I said I would bring you really beautiful, inspirational stories. So guys, please allow me without further ado to let my guest today introduce himself wagon popcorn hi i thank god i don't have mascara <laughs> Oh, what's up? <laughs> Hi. Much. Yani Hi. I come to you dressed like this killer look. Unianzishie tu hapa shock na kucheka watu wadhani si yuko serious na hii kazi. Look. Yeah. We have to break the ice. All right. Yeah. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Please introduce yourself. Right. Yeah. Camera, camera. That one. Right. Yeah. Uh, the ID names. Yes. Samson Odiambo Otieno. Yeah. Uh, artist name Timmy Life, T Y M I L Y F E. Yeah, it's an acronym that means Thank You, Mama, I Love You Forever. Oh, wow! Yeah, oh, Thank You, Mama, I Love You Forever. Yeah, man, that's deep. I think it is okay. I'm just gonna ask, like, why Thank You, Mom, I Love You Forever? Uh, because for the shortest time that I was with my mom, I learned more uh, in that period than I've learned in the years since she's passed mm -hmm. so i just want to make sure that i remember her um in every possible way and i thought if i'm an artist and the plan is to be big or something every time someone says my name they're either thanking their mom or they're reminding me of my mom man i so, love that's yeah. deep Yo, that's uh, even I I had no idea honestly that's deeper and I know we're about to get deeper into your story because I want you to take us all the way back uh, growing up in Kibra and then finding yourself here in London and you know you just like sometimes I tell people nothing you know you can't limit yourself yeah. but I want to get to this part where you are right now and the kind of lessons you've learned in life but are we allowed to tell you, you have an amazing voice yeah thank you take your flowers <coughs> Stop it. <laughs> see, see, the sun is that way. Yeah, the sun, yeah. The sun is what? See, that way. Oh, no, oh, I heard the sun is that way. Oh, okay, sorry. I just thought I would I miss. I said that way. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 you said me in uh, London, so yeah. we have to bring a little bit of La mm -hmm. London in it. London in yeah, it. Yeah. Man, just take us through your story. Growing up, how was life like for you? Uh, life was fun. Mm -hmm. um, for period and then it wasn't fun for a period and then it was really fun for a period yes. and then i grew up okay and then now it's you know when yeah. you're a grown-up it's grown-up stuff yeah grown-up stuff yeah fun in there mm. and um so i was born in kibera okay um lived in kibera most of my uh, childhood and then when i was 12 my mom passed away um and after mom passed 
dad remarried uh, a year later and um, pretty much before that there's no nothing to speak about like mm -hmm. it was just a normal child growing in Kibera yeah. playing having fun mm -hmm. really really fun yeah. childhood yeah. Um, and then after mom died uh, dad remarried and uh, me and the <clears throat> new mom could not get along okay um, I'm opinionated yes and uh, I don't bend over backwards when I feel like I don't need to and this did not go down well with her okay. as well yeah, I want to um, come to the new mom, yes. but there's this period where, again, going back to your name, thank you, mom, I love you forever. Yeah. This time when you grew, grew up with mom, yeah. what was life like for you and what kind of person was she? Uh, my mom was, um, she was an amazing woman, very fierce. Uh, you did not mess with uh, Mama Otis, they called her Mama Otis. Yeah. You did not mess with Mama Otis. Yeah. Every, every one in the neighborhood knew uh, if I was mischievous tell my mom she'll punish me herself mm -hmm. but if you try to punish me you will be punished by my mom okay. um she was a fierce woman mm -hmm. uh, she took no prisoners uh, but she loved us um a lot mm -hmm. like she would um go out of her way given the limited um resources that were at her disposal mm -hmm. um, obviously with the help uh, from my dad yeah. to give us the best life that she could possibly give us mm -hmm. uh, even though we we were punished i never look back and think oh if i lived in the uk i would have probably probably called uh child services or anything um, like i think the way she raised me for those 12 years shaped what um i became later mm -hmm. it really really helped me when things became tough because okay. then i had to i could go back and yeah. be like yeah this is how this is supposed to be done and mm -hmm. i don't think i would have made it through yeah. what i made uh, made it through if it wasn't for those 12 years mm -hmm. so she was an amazing woman okay yeah. uh, did she pass out of sickness or yes okay uh, mysterious sickness mm -hmm. i've never really been able to get to the bottom of um what exactly killed her mm -hmm. but yeah she was she was sickly for a while okay yeah and then she here comes now the new mom yes what was the duration like when mom passed and when you got a new mom and i know especially in other countries yeah. your dad will sit you down yeah. and they'll be like i'm bringing in someone else in the house you guys yeah. will even go out for a couple of dates with this new person yeah. but we come from a place where you just, they just bring you someone and they're like oh, ni mama kutoka, leo na muita mama. Yes. so how was that like for you exactly the second one it was um it, the there was maybe a passing, mm -hmm. like a saying in passing, oh, there's, uh, there's going to be a new mom. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't something like, oh, there's someone else who's coming into our lives who's going to be here for a long time. Mm -hmm. So let's do a proper introduction or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, the first time I knew, oh, this is now the new mom, is when she had moved in. Um, and I was just like, all right, cool. So... Uh, Welcome to the family, I guess. How long after mom passed? Um, about a year. Okay. About a year, yeah. All right. And then after one year, someone moves into the family. To the family. This is your new mom. Yes. And I had, I had absolutely no problem with that mm. because uh, at the end of the day, that, that was my dad's decision. Yeah. Um, all I could do was try to be a good son. Mm -hmm. um, and the way I was raised, um, I was raised to speak up with my mom, by yeah. my mom, yeah. uh, all of us. Yeah. She would be like, if you'd feel uh, she would say kia tuki kufinya sema toa yes so sema inanifinya hapa tujue nulie size kubwa yeah so i always had that okay and uh, the new mom did not like that so like if she said jump she wanted you to jump i'd be like why am i jumping and that was a problem mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah. so you grew up in now your life completely changed Completely changed. I, I was um, I was in the house for um, about three months uh, after she moved in, um, and then after that, I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this. Um, we could not get along at all. She she came with a, a daughter, and um, there was two families basically. So there was her, her daughter, and my dad, and mm -hmm. there was then me and my siblings. Mm -hmm. So if when she cooked, she would cook um, food for her and then there would be food for us. 
Wow. Uh, which um, now I appreciate. Back then, if someone cooked kale for you, Skumawiki, every day, you'd be like, what kind of life is this? Now I would, I would happily eat that because I know it's healthy. Mm. But back then, if someone was eating my eye, they were eating... Um, they, they give you skuma. And, yeah, and they're eating meat and you're eating skuma, you'd be like, yeah. Oh. But now, just like, give me the sukuma any day, any time. Mm. So, these these are things that I would speak up, um, I would speak out. I'd just be like, why this? And my dad is a priest. And um, in uh, Lejo Maria... Your dad priest, is a priest? Yes, my father is a Lejo Maria priest. Yes. And in, in that church, you uh, the priests live in the in the church. So they are allowed to have families outside, but they cannot live with their families in, in the, the church. church. Mm -hmm. So my dad would spend a lot of time in the church. Um, and obviously everything that he knew that was going on in the house came from the mom. Mm -hmm. So the mom would um, just give her version Narrative. of the story. Yes. And uh, obviously I think dad was in love or whatever. Blinded. Uh, he blinded. He was like, oh, yeah. if we said something or if um, we did something you'd be oh you you're against your mom because she's new mm -hmm. or you know things like that yeah. and so um a few things happened in between those three months mm -hmm. that i cannot say um on, on television i yes. cannot say um publicly mm -hmm. but they were life-changing things like it was kind of a matter of life and death and i was like if i continue staying Either I will kill someone or I will die. So I was like, I'd rather leave. So it's just like, yep, done with school, done with everything, off I go. Vamos. Yeah. Where are we going? Uh, we are going. We just we just left and then we went to the streets. Oh. We just like I would rather be there than be in the house where I wasn't feeling welcome. Because sometimes peace is all you need. Yes, exactly. And that's what you are craving for. Yes. So school by, would you say, w what kind of a child were you? What kind of a student were you? Uh, I wasn't the smartest, mm. but um, I was, the entire time I was in school, I never, I was always top three. Mm -hmm. um, so I was, I was, I would say a smart student. So you loved some, school? Yeah, I loved, I loved school. Mm -hmm. I, even, even after, going back to the streets i would read a lot like there was there was newspapers discarded the books or blah 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 things like that i would read all the time mm -hmm. i just wasn't able to read you know go through the proper yeah. uh, schooling curriculum or something like that yeah okay yeah. so how long did you stay in the streets so i was on the streets for about five years four and a half years wow did um, no one come looking for you dad i actually met my dad a few times i i used to go back home because i knew i knew that my my brothers uh one and, and sister were not in a uh, a good place yeah so i would go back to make sure i bring that hassle bring them mm -hmm. some money for upkeep i would make sure that uh the the mom knows that if anything happens to my siblings i still i am able to harm her yes. i did threaten her a few yeah. times yeah um so yeah, I would still go back. I would still see my dad. Um, I would still see my mom. I would meet because I, um, I was in Nairobi and Kisumu, mm. and my main areas were bus stops, mm -hmm. uh, the main bus stops. So a lot of people would travel through that. Mm. You'd meet a lot of relatives. Mm -hmm. and, oh, squeeze my phone, chokora, Maisha. And yeah, when there were like say funerals, I would I would actually go to the funerals mm. and things like that. So I, the entire time. I would still see um, my family periodically. Okay. Yeah. But now, because mom left when you were 12, yeah. this is like now you are 17, yeah. you are deep into your teenage yeah. hood, you are still trying to figure out life. Yeah. Uh, who would you go to for advice if things were not making up, making sense? I, I, would not, I wouldn't say I was thinking about uh, about life beyond what I was. You were surviving. Yeah, I was. This this was my life. So I wasn't, my ambition was very, very limited. That you, part right yeah. there. You are not thinking beyond anything else. Yeah. You are supposed to survive the day. Yes. Mine was, um, uh, will I eat today? Uh, will I not get stabbed today? Will I get my glue today? Very, very important. Glue, very, very important. It was a very key ingredient. Mm. So um, once I had all that, I was okay. Wow. So I wasn't thinking, oh, I want to, I wasn't even thinking I want to go back to school because 
uh, for me at that time, the only way for me to go back to school was for me to go back home. Mm. And that was not a risk that I was willing to take. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, we will be here. And whatever happens, happens. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Man, that must have been pretty. Like you're in London right now. Yeah. few years back, you had no... You did you even have dreams you would get into a plane? Uh, no. I mean, like I said, and actually, um, in a weird way, those were some of my happiest moments in life. Mm. Like being on the streets. I think after mom, being on the streets was probably the best time that I've had in a, in a long time, even after the streets. Mm. Uh, because there was, I had zero pressure. Like I did not need to please anyone. Uh, it was just, I was focused on myself. It's just me and surviving. Mm. And so there was no stress. Mm -hmm. The only stress would be, oh, my glue is drying. Where am I going to buy the next one? Mm -hmm. Or, um, because food, there's, there's, there was food aplenty. You know, there's, you go to, uh, if you don't go to hotels where they have leftover foods, yeah. there's bean bags, there's yes. beans everywhere. Yeah. Um, if you hustle and you get some money, you can buy food. Um, when we were in Kisumu, we used to go to the, uh, it's called Luangni Hotel, mm -hmm. uh, where it's, it's by the lake and yeah. people eat a lot of fish there. Yeah. So you just wait for someone to finish and then they'll give you the leftovers, the leftovers yeah. and, and you'll be full. So yeah. food was a plenty. Yeah. Uh, there was no stress. Mm. So I wasn't worried about anything. Yeah. Um, and then after I was say rescued, that's when I started having ambition. That's mm -hmm. why when I started, when I, my first interactions with um, Western, when, uh, Westerners, mm gave me a glimpse of what's out there and what could possibly mm. be achieved. Okay. Yeah. Take me through that, the rescue process and how you actually ended up here yeah. as a dad to such an amazing girl. Um, so it's, it's a long process. Yeah. Um, so in Kisumu, there's a, um, there's a program, they call themselves Coop. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's a children's home yeah. and uh, what they do is they go onto the streets and then they take uh, the children, they take them to uh, a children's home and then they try to reunite them with their families. Mm -hmm. So that is the priority. Okay. Make sure that we, because a, a lot of children on the streets are not there because life back home is tough. Some are just there because they want to be there and I had a friend who was a street child because he failed an exam and he knew that if he went back home his dad was going to beat him up mm -hmm. so he decided mm. instead of going back home i'll just go to the streets yeah so this is someone that if you go back home and you sit the dad down and you're like look raise a child stop beating up a child blah 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 if if the dad allowed him to fail you know, so he can learn, he wouldn't be on mm -hmm. the street. So someone mm -hmm. like this, if you take them back home, chances are their life could be restarted. Okay. Uh, so that's what they did. So for those who could not go back home, mm -hmm. they took you to uh, vocational training yeah. uh, centers. So yeah. they uh, took you to, you, you know, you'd go learn mechanics, uh, masonry, um, things like that. Yeah. And then once you're qualified and you have your certificate, then you're they like they set you up they yes. get you a house they pay for like three months rent and then, um, tell you. And then they're like right now you're out of our system yes let's bring in someone else mm -hmm. so i was a beneficiary of that mm -hmm. so they came to the streets uh they took a bunch of us they took us back to the center um uh, we did escape a few times mm -hmm. which is weird yeah because we missed the life on the streets because you're used to living with no rules freedom yes and then suddenly someone is telling you you have to go to bed at this you have time to shower. you have to shower you have to do this you have to do this and you're just like at least give me glue mm -hmm. like no 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 drugs yes. so a lot of a lot of kids would just escape escape and go back to the streets mm -hmm. i did that a few times yeah but the last time i was just like you know what i'll stay mm -hmm. So I stayed there uh, for about two, three years, two years um, thereabouts. Learned masonry because I did not want to go back mm -hmm. home um, at all, yeah. basically. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, I was like, look, guys, I know a lady. Uh, she's in um, Nairobi. She's my aunt. If you took me to her, I'm pretty sure she would accept me. Mm -hmm. She would let me, she would allow me in. Mm -hmm. um, 
and they contacted her. Um, she said, yeah, I've been looking for the boy, blah, 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 bring him over. I was like, oh, cool. So they took me to her mm -hmm. and this was back in Kibera now. Yeah. So it was full cycle basically. So I went back to Kibera and this woman was just like, look, if we go hungry, we go, we're going to go hungry mm -hmm. together. Because she's someone who my mom had uh, helped uh, when mm -hmm. she was younger. So she's been back. Um, yeah, my mom was a tailor. And so uh, she taught her how to, um, you know, wow. uh, tailoring. So she was like, this is my way of giving back mm -hmm. to, um, to uh, you. yeah, to, to your mom. To your mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she took me in um, and then I started integrating myself back in the community. I started from my experience with the, uh, being in, in the children's home where I met a lot of um, foreigners, uh, if I can say that, who helped open up my mind mm -hmm. and things like that. I started looking for organizations in Kibera that I could involve myself with. Mm -hmm. And that is what expanded um, my understanding of how I could get to um, a certain place as well. Yeah. And by this time, I had gone from, I have zero ambitions, I have zero dreams, I'm just focused on myself to, actually, I want to buy a red car. Wow. Yeah. I want to I wanna drive my own car. I wasn't thinking I want to fly. I was... I need a car. I, I was just like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy myself a car. And for me to buy a car, what do I need to do? And remember, most of my education at this point is informal. Yes. Yeah. So it was, you have to make it yourself because the system at this point is basically against uh, me. Yeah. So I was just like, I'm going to buy a car, I'm going to buy a house, I don't care how I'm going to do it, this is what I'm going to do. And slowly, I just started looking for jobs, I, I was selling uh, cigarettes and candy uh, and Njugu Karanga, which is a very dangerous business, by the way. Njugu Karanga? Yes. How now? It's very dangerous because stock does not last, especially if you like doing it. Oh, so, I was, I was, so you're selling and you're eating, you're having your cake at the same time? Look. It's a dangerous business. Oh, you just man. know that. Oh, if really? you see if you see someone selling ground nuts and they are not eating them, respect that person. It's addictive. It's very dangerous. You'll just be like one. Two. And you just you're talking to someone and you <laughs> So obviously that, that business yeah. failed. Yeah. Because I loved eating more than I loved selling. Uh -huh. So it's like I'm gonna <laughs> sell <laughs> I was like, I'm going to sell eggs yes. now, boiled eggs, mm. because there's only much yeah. boiled eggs you can eat. Yeah. And ob obviously, you can't eat them one mm. by one. Mm. So started selling those, started involving myself with organizations, yes. um, meeting people. Um, my first employment was as an actor. So I was doing street theater mm. and they would take us and they would pay you like 200 to yes. do and i was like yeah this is good mm. i'm gonna become a famous actor one day okay uh didn't pan out but it was an experience mm -hmm. uh, and i earned money and i met a lot of people yeah. uh and i was like i want to start um doing projects that will also give back to the community mm -hmm. and things like that mm. and my idea was based around education uh because Personally, I know that I've missed out on a lot of opportunities that I would have had had I had the right papers or, you know, something like that. So I thought, what can I do that will help someone else from Kibera yeah. uh, bridge that gap? Because, of course, we have schools in Kibera, but they are not really schools. Yes. Like, it's you a standard, standard eight dropout teaching a standard eight you true know, story it's, yeah. true story substandard yeah substandard and they don't have they don't have they didn't have books mm. proper books mm. uh, curriculum books mm. you know uh, set books and things like that so i thought what if i started a library because we did not have any um at that time mm. in kibera i was involved with a with an organization that we had founded called amani kibera at that time and uh the organization's primary focus was on peace like doing peace projects maintaining peace and things like that this was after the post-election violence mm -hmm. um and then i just introduced the idea i was like if we wanted to have long-lasting peace why don't we start breeding the peace with these kids that are growing up in kibera because these are the ones who are going to mm -hmm. be throwing stones yeah. two minutes from now yeah. and i thought if we could keep them in class if we could keep them, their heads buried um, under books, chances are they will not have um, 
the type yes. be influenced yeah. out there. Um, yeah, and the, I was t- talking to uh, Ben, um, a friend of mine at that yeah. time, yeah. and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's let's, um, let's, do it. let's let's do it, and we wrote a proposal to yeah. uh, a few organizations mm-hmm. and Slovak Aid was like we love the idea mm-hmm. we're going to donate the first set of books and uh, um, chairs and stuff mm-hmm. and then a friend of mine was had just built a school as well in Kibera and she had a hall that she wasn't she was planning to use for mm-hmm. something else mm-hmm. but I was like look you have a school here if I put a library here your students are going to be benefiting Beneficiaries, yes. from this. Yeah. So she was like, yeah, yeah, put it there. Yeah. Um, and from that library, that library was probably the springboard that I needed to now get to a point where I was in a position to even come to the UK mm-hmm. uh, because the recognition that the library got uh, made put me in um, people's thoughts or yes. you know, things like that. So a lot of people are like, oh yeah, let's find out what this boy is, uh, is thinking about, what, what is What's he doing, what is. do you want to do with your life. Mm. Um, you know, people like the UN came in yes. and things like that. Congratulations. Um, and yeah, that's how I got yeah. out of the streets, children's home, uh, back into Kibera yeah. and into the society that I ended okay. up being in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, talk to me about your journey now to the UK. And when you come into the UK, is it a bed of roses? Uh, well, I would say, given my situation, yeah. um, when I was leaving Kenya, I was already on a bed of roses, okay. I would say that, yeah. because I had managed to get myself out of uh, the slums, yeah. I was living in what you would call a, a gated community. Uh, did you get a car? Yes. A red, red one. one. <laughs> I got I got a good deal on a on a on a, on a, on a white one. No, and you. I was like, mm-hmm. Well, yeah. let's compromise. Yes. Yeah. So I got I actually bought my first car when I was still in Kibera. Oh. Um, and I was like, yeah. So I bought it. The idea was to use it as a, as taxi mm-hmm. as a taxi, but I think it was more just for me to validate yes. um, my achievement or yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. So when I uh, when I was coming to Kibera, I was already living uh, to to London. I was already living in what you would call a gated community. Yeah. Which for me, given that just a few years uh, before, I wasn't even thinking I want to live in a house. I was just like, Gunia, where is my Gunia? You know, as long as everything is Nagamiangu and stuff. Yeah. So the story of how I ended up in Kibera in the UK in the UK. It has, it takes a lot from um, my achievements before that. Um, so I don't really like talking about it, but I'm going to talk about it. Thank you. Because I like you. Oh, wow. So I'm you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, while I was in Kenya, mm. I got to a point where I was hanging out with... Um, what you could call the who and who's of the society, you know, I was in a place where I would eat in Westlands or, you know, Gong Road, you know, like proper restaurants, I would go to proper gigs, Mm. you know, things Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was at one of these gigs that I met someone. Uh, She's British, she's English. Um, We met at one of these events and uh, the Sparks flew. It was at night, and there were fireworks. Those were the sparks. So. Oh um, no! Uh, like, oh yeah! Oh, oh, yeah. oh. I mean, those ones, those ones did kind of oh, as well. But you got butterflies. It it's okay. It's, it's okay for a man to be vulnerable. Oh, I, I am, I am, I have no problem. Oh, being so, vulnerable. so you got. I cry. And no, I love it. it's okay. But yeah. now to this part, so you come on. You got butterflies. I don't know if there were butterflies, but, but you felt some type yeah, of way. Yeah, Those are I, butterflies. I felt are, are they my baby? <laughs> <laughs> I would say I felt my baby. Uh, are those the butterflies? No, my baby is like disgusting. No, it, it is. is. Yes, no, what it is is when you're feeling ma, mm, There's the a name. name. There's a name for that. I'm gonna give you that name, but it's not. Baby is you. Oh, yeah. I did not feel so. Ill. You felt, felt the opposite. opposite I'm of gonna, Ill. I'm gonna give you the name of that one. 
my so kikuyu is coming. This entire time I've yeah. been saying madidi, like I'd be like, oh, don't give me madidi. Mm. I'm telling someone I don't want to be ill or don't give me ill. Okay, my so people, whoever, weird, the people yeah. who are watching might correct me, but for me, I think the V is, Jageke is, how do you tell when someone digi da, digi di? Close enough, I'll yes, take it. Yes, digi <laughs> It's close you enough. You like sana, yes. You liked her. We liked each other. Oh, wow. Um, and then we dated for a while, mm. and then um, I wanted to stay in Kenya, because, um, I love Kenya, like, even living here now, if I could make the amount of money that I'm making here back home, chances are I would go back home, mm. uh, or if I didn't have Keshi, because Keshi is um, Your daughter. very, very important as yeah. well, her being here is very important for me. So yeah, anyway, we met, mm -hmm. uh, and then we were like, yeah, I'm feeling the, the giddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we both felt it. Mm. Uh, we dated for a while, um, and then because her, her parents are elderly and they are not able to fly, the plan was that I would come visit and then go back uh, <laughs> home. Um, but I was denied a visa, mm. even though I had been here already before. And then we thought, we contacted a few lawyers and they were like, look, if you guys get married, it will be easy. So this is the part that I say takes, I feel like sometimes, yeah. takes from um, Your success my back home Because people will be because like, you got married for the papers. Yes, yes. But that's um, not true. It's, it's, it's technically true because we you got, got married, married so for I the papers. Say I could get here. Okay. But we, we, we did love each other. Mm -hmm. It wasn't um, like, oh, we, I need to go to the UK. Okay. So I'm gonna, it was a necessity. Yes. You know, some of those things that you do. Mm -hmm. Um, because there was the only other option was for me to never meet her parents, mm. and you really wanted that. I, yeah, we were like we were together. Mm. We were planning. Um, mm. the, the The alternative was for me to never meet the parents. Yeah. And at this point, we were like we were proper proper in a relationship, um, and we were obviously talking about marriages and raising a family. Mm. Um, and it's it's only right. That if she's she had met my family, she you meet you know, hers. Yeah, it was only right that I met hers, and because the parents could not come to Kenya, I had to come here, and because I was already denied a visa, applying for another one was probably going to be denied as well, and we thought if we get married, you know, I'll just come for the a, a few months and then go back home. Mm -hmm. I'll still have a visa anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I got here. And then I changed my mind because I was given a long, it was a long visa that allowed me to work. And um, my businesses that I had back home, they did not need me to be physically there to run them. I was like, I could just say, make some extra bit of money and, go back home. and then go back home, you know, because I'm not, I'm not taking from um, mm. anything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, I ended up staying. Okay. Yeah. Are you guys still together? Um, not really. Mm, not really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're not. All right. Yeah. What happened? Uh, things happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's just say we, we grew apart and um, we got to a point where um, we thought it's best to remain friends. She's she's an amazing woman. You I guys would never talk. say a bad yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we have, beautiful. We have, like Keshi calls her mom. Yes. Um, uh, they spend a lot of time with Keshi. Um, they are, I would never ever say a bad word about her. She's, mm -hmm. she's an incredible woman. She's mm -hmm. um, helped me a lot as well. Um, besides my achievements, she's also done a lot for me. Um, she supported my music. She's, she was a really good supporter. But we got to a point where um, I would say the romance part of our relationship was dead, kind of, and we thought if we continue uh, forcing it, because we had tried to make it work, work a few times, if we continue forcing it, we might end up harming each other, mm -hmm. um, maybe not physically, but emotionally, mentally. Yeah. Yeah. So we thought we have a good thing going. Let's not let's, spoil it. Let's not spoil it. Mm. Uh, she's 
still one of my best friends. Oh, I love yeah. that. that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Can tell you really cared about her. You still care yeah, about her. I do. Which is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Now you are here in the UK because yeah. I want to get to talk about your art. Yeah. But you still, you are a single dad yeah. who has full cans- custody, custody. Yeah. of the daughter. Yeah. We don't see that often. Yeah, it's it's not, it doesn't happen a lot. A it? lot? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Honestly, I've done stories and before a man can get custody, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. I think the law favors the woman more because, yeah. again, the child is still young, yeah. this child needs to grow, like yeah. all those things. Eh? Yeah. But talk to me about it and why, if it's okay with you, the mom is not part of her life. Um... Well, I got custody in court, mm-hmm. um, so I got myself a lawyer, got uh, the mom a lawyer, and uh, we went to court, and after a few months, um, I was awarded uh, custody. Uh, the short story is, so I had Keshi just before I met um, um, my wife, yes. uh, the woman who later on became, became my wife. Yeah. I didn't know I had Keshi until a year, uh, like after she was born. Um, so me and her mom, we were never together. We we did not date. It was uh, the Givi at a party, mm-hmm. and um, Keshi was conceived basically. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that Keshi, I had a child. But when I found out, uh, she was already seeing someone else mm-hmm. at that point. Uh, I reached out and I was like, I hear um, you have my child. Let's She's the talk one who told it. you. Uh, well, she, my uncle told me, who, uh, my uncle who lived near her, um, told me. He was like, I'm hearing rumors, so maybe just confirm. So I just called and confirmed. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. allow me to just ask you something, yeah. because this is something I also need answers from a man's perspective, right? Yeah. When someone is pregnant for your baby, yeah. would you rather they tell you, or are they justified th- to keep it away f- from you? They're not. Do you think they in have genuine... Uh-huh. In my opinion, I feel like, it's best to let me know i know that um, especially in, in in the society that we come in we come from in kenya there are a lot of women who would tell a man i have i'm pregnant with your child and mm-hmm. the man would be like yeah, yeah no 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 that's mm-hmm. that's not me um I've, I've never even had sex in my life <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, i know that's a genuine concern I, 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 i've never even had I, sex in my life. Like, how do you even conceive? Like, how how do you even oh, make a child? Mm-hmm. That, that was never me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know that's a thing. Uh, but personally, I would prefer tell me so that I... Because the, for, for nine months, let's say you have a child that you were not planning to have. You have at least nine months to prepare yourself. Not just mentally, but also make arrangements for the child to be comfortable when mm-hmm. they are born. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you just find out that you have a child it's just like everything at once you know um and i prefer knowing so i would say just tell them if if they if you tell a man that you're pregnant with their child and they um walk out i would say it's the it's better for you because then you can decide do i want to keep this child or do I, I want to uh, get rid of the child? Mm-hmm. I feel like any man who walks out on a woman who's pregnant by their child is not worthy of being a father anyway. Mm-hmm. So you will force them to yeah. stay, yeah. but that, that's not going to do any good for the child mm-hmm. because this person does not want this child in the first place. So just tell them, if they walk out, you're, you're, you're losing... Obviously, you're pregnant already. Yes. At this point, there's not much more that you can lose. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, personally, to answer your question, yeah. let me know so I can also plan myself. Mm-hmm. I know you, you're the one who's going through, you, you're the one who's going to go through a lot of um, uh, the emotional roller coaster, uh, changes in your uh, body and yes. things like that. But at the same time, mentally, I also need to be prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I found out that I had Keshi after a year, yeah. reached out to her. Uh, she called, she said, yeah, yeah, um, she's your child. And I was like, I want to be in, uh, in the child's life. Um, and she was like, yeah, that's cool, but there's someone else that you need to talk to right now. Um, and then I reached out to the guy and I was like, look, 
I understand that you and Vera are together. I don't want anything to do with her. We like we've we it happened once. It's never happened again. We've never even reached out. Mm -hmm. I'm not after your partner. I just want to be in my child's life. And the guy pretended that he was okay with that. But later on, I found out that he was not okay with that. So basically, every time I took Keshi, so I would, took, I would go to her parents' place, take Keshi, spend time with Keshi, bring her back. Every time I took Keshi, he would beat her up. He would beat uh, the mother up. And she never told me and she never told the parents. Um, and then one day I found out and um, I just confronted him. So I went, I went, I had taken, uh, they had a son at this point. Yeah. Uh, I took... Uh, Keshi, uh, the mother, and the son out, basically. And then when I was bring, when I dropped them back to the parents, he came in and he took Keshi and he left. And he told the dad, tell the Vera not to come back to my house, blah, blah, blah. And so Vera called me. I was driving back home. At this point, I had a car, you know. Red one still? No, white. Okay. Uh, this was a blue one. This oh. was my third one. So, oh, man. You know. Oh, man. Yeah. God, this thing is a lifestyle, yeah. though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey! <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so I'm I was back. wondering what part of this interview will that part come out? <laughs> Nigarama. I attend the Nigarama. 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 Mm. Um, she calls me and she's like, oh, the guy has come. He's angry. He's taken Keshi. He's left his son, who later on I found out is not his son. But at, this, at that point, he, would, he didn't know mm. it wasn't his son. Oh, wow. Um, he's left his son, took my daughter and said, told the mom, don't come to the mm. house. Mm. And my alarm bells just were ringing. This is an, an angry man uh, with my, uh, daughter. my daughter by themselves alone, blah, blah, blah. I was just like, yo, uncle, where are you at? Where we are going? Uh, so we went to the house. Uh, I had to break down the door because he had uh, um, locked himself in uh, and he wouldn't come out. I had, we had to break down the door because uh, for my child, if I'm going to jail, I'm going to jail. Um, Luckily, he had not done anything uh, to her. Took uh, I took Keshi, uh, took them back to the mother, uh, to the to the parents, and I said, "Don't she shouldn't go back to the, she shouldn't go back to this guy until they've worked out things. Don't take the kids, just you and him talk out things, blah blah blah." And then I got a call in the morning uh, from the police. They were like, "Oh, there's a man who's here. He's reporting that you kidnapped his uh, wife and uh, two children." Hey. Uh, so you need to either bring yourself to the nearest police station or we will find you and you do not want us to look find for you. you. And of course, you know, with police brutality in Kenya, um, it's just best to, to just comply. go. Just go. Yeah. Yes. So I just went to the police station. I explained the situation. I was with um, my uncle at that time. I explained the situation. They were like, can we go to the house with you? Can we confirm this from the wife? Can we, go, can we confirm this from the parents? Uh, I was like, yeah. So we went, they confirmed and they were both like, this woman needs to get out of this situation. Mm. And this is when Vera felt safe enough to then say what has been happening. Mm. So basically, she's been going through physical violence the entire time. Uh, and it increased when I came into came back into the picture. Mm. Uh, because this guy loved Keshi more than anything. So me coming into the picture meant that at some point, I would take Keshi. And he did not want that. Mm. So he told Vera not to give access uh, to Keshi, but she could not do that as well um, for whatever reason, mm. which I appreciate. Mm. So I just told the parents, look, I'm in a place right now where I'm able to afford a lot of things. Yeah, uh, I grew up in a, in not in, in, in the, I didn't have the best uh, of uh, childhoods. I would not want my child to grow up in an, in an environment like that when, if I can provide a better life for them, mm. uh, which I had offered already, but the guy refused. Mm. But this time, I was like, there are two options. Either you let me take Vera and the two children, rent them a house, pay for their bills and all that, or I take my child. Um, the dad was against the idea of me taking her because mm. he's, he's an old school kind of dad who think violence against a woman is okay justifiable um i had i was not okay with mm. that and the mom was like look um i'm gonna risk a lot by saying this but i'm just gonna say if you're able to afford a life for my daughter with her children outside of this violence i would say do it wow. and of course it was a risk for her as well because she's going against mm. the husband mm. who we've just found out 
is okay with violence mm-hmm. against women. Mm. And I was just like, yeah, I'm going to do it. So I called the guy. I was like, look, uh, you need to find another wife. This one is gone. Uh, you're going to have to be paying child support and everything, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, no, definitely not doing that. So I took them to Kisumu. This was in Nairobi. Took them to Kisumu, mm. rented a house for her. Um, obviously, a two-bedroom house. So you, if you want to have your own fun, have your own fun. Uh, and then the kids make have sure the their kids, own uh, space. Yeah, their own space. Rented a house for her. Uh, left, came back to the UK. At this point, I was uh, in the UK. Came back to the UK and um, I found out that she was not cool with what I had done. Mm. She was cool with it. It was just that I was paying a lot of money mm. into the house mm. instead of to her. So she would rather live in a smaller house and, and save some of the money um, without telling me, of yes. course. Um, and I was not okay with that. She did it again. So it was from two bedroom to one bedroom. Um, Cause I used to send her mm, money and then mm. she would pay for the bills mm. from two bedroom to one bedroom. And from I was, one um, bedroom I, was um, mm. I had taken Keshi to a private school as well, which she, she changed that quickly as soon as I left, um, took her to a public school. Uh, and then it was from um, a one bedroom to a back to um, uh, a slum in, called Manyata in Kisumu. So I, I'm doing everything that I can to make sure that this person, all, all the only thing that you need to do is be the mother, just parent. That's it. You don't need to work. You don't like just parent. Everything else is provided for, for at, at least until Keshi is 18 and the son. Um, cause at that point there was no, mm. uh, I wasn't differentiating. This is my child. This is not my child. Aww. It was just their children. Uh, we we're taking care of them, but I felt like she wasn't um very keen on that she cared a lot more about, about other things than the this. children so because i had already given the option um i was just like you know what i'm just gonna take my child and of course i had the option of just walking in taking keshi and that's it you never see her again but i thought i wanted i did not want questions from keshi when mm, she's cross. old enough uh to ask where's mom why is this why is this why is this so i thought i'd just follow the proper channel uh, and that's why i went to court yeah and because she could not afford a lawyer i had to get her a lawyer as well um so i i don't get there and the magistrate says oh she has not received um adequate counsel or anything like that so your lawyer will, is yours your business she'll argue your case yeah. my lawyer is mine she'll argue my case um yeah, and the cases were argued, and then I, would, I was awarded custody. Wow, how old was Keshi? Uh, she was four at this point. And now she is? Uh, she's eight. What's the conversation like right now? Does she get to meet the mom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So in the, in the court order, um, and we specifically asked for this because I knew I would get lazy because I, I, I knew I was bringing Keshi mm. here. Mm. And it, it's, it's a lot of money to travel back home. Yeah. And I thought if I come with her, chances are I'm just going to be like, yeah, but do I have to? So I um, asked my lawyer to insert um, clauses close. that mm. uh, said that I had to make Keshi available to the mother at least twice a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this way it's in the documents. Um, I don't really have to because the mother is the type of person that if I was like, oh, here's uh, 50 pounds, I can't make it this time. Mm. She would be totally cool with that. Mm. But I thought... I want her to be in the life. I wanted um, her. I wanted Kish to be in the life of the brother as well. I tried to adopt the brother, and that's when I found out that dad wasn't really the dad wow. uh, because I needed to have biological consent from mm. biological father. Mm. So did DNA test with a few men, and none of them turned out to be mm. the dad. Mm. Um, so if that could not happen, I wanted her to be in the life of the mother and the mother cannot come here obviously she Mm. can but Mm. i cannot facilitate it Mm. Uh, so i have to go to kenya at least twice a year um, make keshi available to the mother and the brother Mm. Um, they she has another son uh, at the moment so both brothers and things like that so yeah yeah, she does uh see the mom yeah she spent six weeks with her Mm. um over the summer holidays um, okay. Yeah, just recently. Yeah. That's beautiful. Because yeah. sometimes, men, the bitterness between parents keeps the children away from 
the yeah. parents yeah. you know it's more about you than it is about the children yeah so just being able to differentiate your own needs and your own children yeah. needs that's beautiful yeah. yeah maybe if it's between me and her not, no, the, not exactly high she, so yeah. yeah how is the relationship like between you and your daughter i saw she does makeup on you Oh, well, yeah, uh, um, Mother's Day, hey. uh, Mother's Day, she goes, oh, you're the mom now, let's do makeup and things like that. We have, we have a beautiful relationship. Um, we have, a, I, like, I really, really love her and she really, really loves me. Uh, we spend a lot of time together. We have a relationship that I don't think I can really describe it. Mm. If, if someone sees us, someone will just know, oh, these people have a special thing going on. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of things together. She's, she's an amazing child, uh, not into technology. She's into oh. books. Wow, what? She, yeah, I, I don't know if she got that from me, I don't know. Probably. I mean, no, I mm. don't think I I loved reading, but not to that extent. Yeah. She's she's a child that if you asked her it's her birthday and you're like, Oh, what present can I get you? She'd be like, So I've been thinking of getting this book. So she'll ask you for a book instead of you know, she has an iPad that she never uses. Uh she watches T V like once every yes. week or every two weeks. The only time she watches T V is uh, when she's not by herself, uh -huh. if I want us to watch something together, yeah. or she was, she's with um, uh, Belinda and they're watching something together. Yeah. Um, she's really, really into school. Uh, obviously, she's proper Briton right now with oh. the accent and a wa and all that. Oh, um, she's what are? She's, she's what are. Oh. Even, <laughs> even her Swahili right now is. Yes. We are, we are, we are struggling a little bit, oh, but yeah. I, I totally, totally do not mind it uh, because I know that. Um, the environment that she lives in is different. I don't want her. I don't want to force her. She's already. She already has a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. As a child, she's already moved schools like four times. She's been traumatized. Um, uh, found out uh, that uh, the guy had been either the guy or someone. A guy's friend had been uh, physically violent towards her at some point. So I'm just like. You know, you've earned it. Take your take your time. Mm. If if you wanna learn Swahili, mm. you can learn it later on in life. When you so, when yeah. you want to. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. When you're done running, come back to me. Your voice is beautiful. I saw one of the videos in the morning we were watching you have shot it in it's shot in Kibra. Yeah. But then you do know your voice is beautiful. Talk to me about music. Um before we talk, can you drop something for us? Like so wa hakikisha Mr. Kanyi kwa host kwa vitu. Spendi kwa host kwa vitu naweza kuwa hapa nikisema your voice is beautiful because you told me I'm beautiful so staki waone ni kama na wa short change. So just drop something for us. A verse. And I don't mind when you wear it red. And I don't mind when you wear it purple. And I don't mind when you wear it black, pink or green. And I don't mind when you wear it blue. Still looks good on you. That's lipstick. Go check it out. <laughs> Other one, give me the other one. The one is in the on your um, link for our social handles. Yeah, um, copy pasting. Yeah, copy pasting. Um, there'll be no copy pasting. Oh, na 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 na, no time wasting. Oh, na 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 na, you'll be getting the with me. Oh, na 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 na, oh, oh, you pretty young thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, you'll be getting there. Real thing. Oh yeah. No copy pasting. No copy pasting. No, no copy pasting. No copy God, pasting. it's you. You you have a beautiful voice. Thank you. Yeah, you love music. I love music. Music is um, therapy for me. It's um, when I when I when I'm in a in a in a funk, music gets me out of that. Um, when I there was a time I was I was depressed for the first time in in my life. I I, I know that. Um, when you're back home, a lot, a lot of people say depression is not a thing and I was one of those and then I was depressed at some point. Um, but then I went into a studio and um, after a few hours I came out and I was like, what was that about? You know, I was 
why was I in that place? Mm-hmm. Um, I've, al- I've always loved singing, I've always been yes. into music, but I didn't know that it had a therapeutic effect on me until it got me out of that funk. And um, since then, I was doing, before I was doing it for fun, I was just like, as a hobby, mm. blah, blah, blah. And then I decided, you know what? I'm going to try and do it proper, proper mm. this time. Mm. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's deep. You speak of depression at a time when people, you said back home we think it's crazy. Yeah. Back home we think it doesn't exist. Yeah. And I like that now people are actually giving mental health yeah. the attention it deserves. Yeah. So kudos to you. Are you creating you. any awareness? Um, on uh, depression? On mental health? On mental health. Yeah. Um, at the moment, I wouldn't say I am. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that would be hypocritical of me. Yeah. I, I feel like my way, the way that I'm doing it right now is by admitting that it's a thing. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of um, the reason why people don't talk about it a lot, uh, especially in Kenya, yeah. as a man, mm-hmm. is toxic masculinity mm. you know um and i feel like as a man from that background if i'm able to admit that i have been depressed uh, that i've gone through that and i know men who've been depressed i feel like my vulnerability can help someone else who maybe is in that situation or, mm. or is getting close to that situation seek help mm. yeah so uh, that's i think that's the awareness that i'm doing at the moment mm-hmm. yeah how do people receive your art how do you think like, are people crazy out there about your music? Um, I would say that people who are fans are. Um, I haven't released music in a, in a minute and my inbox is full of mm. um, why that is. Mm. I wouldn't say the masses are crazy, but the few people that um, understand my type of music and are in love with my music are. Mm. Um, yeah. They are. So good job and go release some music. But you know, the more I get deeper into music, the more I realize sometimes people just have to release it when they are ready. Yeah. It's an art you can't force. That's, yes, exactly. It's that's, an, that's how I do it. Yes. Yeah. You mentioned, as I wind up, that you feel like sometimes people take away, or your life here takes away, you know, your success yeah. from home. Yeah home you are successful yeah but also when you are here there are a lot of misconceptions yeah. especially people look at this place and they are like Hapa ni mado- yeah. Ni, ni pound. yeah Majua pound. i changed yeah. into euros, euros yeah. don't don't do it eh? so, uh, i'm so, experienced yeah yeah <laughs> i'll take the euros off you I'll, you don't need them i'll take them off you and then i'll when i go to europe i'll Oh, okay, yeah, so good. Take, take yeah, we just yeah, have yeah, to yeah, give yeah. me a good rate. Eh? So, <laughs> <laughs> you just have to give me a good rate. Eh? But, but, uh, how is life like here, and what are some of the misconceptions you think we have back home about your lives back here? Um, I think um, the money thing is um, is a big thing. I think a lot of the misconceptions, especially if you are if you were married to a white person obviously white equals money which is definitely not true i know a lot of white people who are broker than i am um that misconception um uh, doubled up with the fact that you live in london mm-hmm. uh, one of the richest cities in in the world people just assume that you you loaded so if, when you tell when someone asks you for money and you go i don't have it now but i will try they're just like oh yeah yeah um, i'm in Hima. like that's it mm. there's no there's no you're not allowed to say i don't have mm-hmm. even if you don't have a job you're not allowed you live you live in the uk what mm-hmm. do you mean you don't have money um so for example if say i go to kenya i've spent money on the flight and things like that and then i'm telling someone i don't have money uh they don't think maybe this person borrowed this money because they had to do this they're just like yo bro if you can up, mm. if you can up get a flight you know uh, you're coming to kenya every now and then and then i'm asking you for like 50k and you're telling me you don't have um you're shooting music videos and all that stuff so the, the biggest one is uh mm-hmm. the money thing um and the other one has to do with happiness a lot of people assume that just because you're here you're happy which is very far from the truth i can say that I was much happier when I was back home oh. than I am now. I am not terrible by any stretch, but like I said before, when I was home, going through all that 
childhood, going to the streets and all that. Mm. At no point in my life did I feel depressed. Or to the point where I needed to tell someone mm. I am depressed mm. or I am in this place. I'm mm-hmm. feeling suicidal or something mm. like that. Mm. Um, I felt that here. And this is, the pl- this is supposed to be the happy place. This is supposed to be the place where you're uh, not supposed to feel things like mm-hmm. that. So mm-hmm. a lot of people assume that once you're out there, you're happy. Your life is made. Uh, you've made it. You know, you, you're not supposed to cry. You're not supposed to complain. You're not supposed to do that, all that. Um, and I can tell you for a fact that it is the opposite. A lot of people, when you get here, it becomes work home. It's work you, you can squeeze in some fun in there, yeah. but living here, you have to be earning constantly for you to be able to mm-hmm. have a life. Mm-hmm. Uh, people back home, would you can say, oh, leo nanda kulalanja, let me go kwa, kwa sam, I go eat there. Here, you have to make appointments before you, you go to someone's place. So if, say, I have to think I'm going to be hungry in three weeks' time, let, let me ask Lydia if she mm-hmm. will be home mm-hmm. so I can go visit her, mm-hmm. so I can mm-hmm. eat. Mm-hmm. Home, I'm just like, hey, Lynn, uko happy? I'm, I'm coming over. You know, is, is there, is there food? You, it's, not, <laughs> it's, not, it's not possible. Unless, unless you're really, really, tight. really tight with the person mm. and you're, you're actually neighbors, because mm. it will cost you money to go from your place mm. to this person's place. Mm. So it's, it goes to the, the 20 pounds that is going to cost me to get to this person. Why don't I use five pounds to feed myself? So it's there, there's the the connection is kind of lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So people yeah. have people connect more on events, parties, things like that, yeah. rather than on just a personal level. Okay. So that's that. I, I think the misconception that once you're abroad, you're happy is no. It's 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 one that I think people need to mm-hmm. know is not true. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you're coming back home? Do you think I am. I am coming back home. You, do you want us to go back together? Oh, God. Yes. Oh, people. <laughs> I knew it. I don't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> think there's something beyond this feeling. <laughs> you, oh, you think there's something special between us? Oh, yeah. You, 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 I'm not, fe- I'm no, not feeling I'm the... Free, I'm, uh, oh. the giddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling the giddy. <laughs> I, I intend to come back home go back home mm. at some point mm. uh, but at the moment i am um, focused on making sure keshi um receives her education because wow. one of the main reasons i brought her here is mm. because she can grow up to be her own woman here mm-hmm. yes it's not uh it's not like a woman here is still very equal to a man but compared to kenya yeah there's a big difference the education system here also uh, if she's, uh, she goes to university here... She's an, at an it, advantage yes, position. Yes, I it's easier that. for her to get uh, a job, yeah. a, a well-paying job. Even mm. if she decided to, want to, uh, to she wanted to work in mm. Kenya, mm. if she shows um, a British passport, chances are, you know, she'll be thought of highly, highly. compared to someone who yeah. maybe is better qualified, mm. but I can hate, just show hate, their ID and I things like that. that. that still happens yeah. at home, it, though. Yeah. It's sad. It's, for it's really so sad. so many of us who keep struggling. Yeah. But anyways, I just think you're an incredible dad. Uh, you. you have a day job here? Yes. What do you do? So I work with a company, an organization, yes. that supports uh, young people with uh, drug uh substance abuse problems okay and sometimes we work with uh county line crimes as well um so county line crimes is basically when drug dealers take kids from one uh, county to sell drugs into another other county county. into another county it's it's actually trafficking yeah um, yeah still living your purpose yeah, I'm trying. Still helping people. I'm trying along the way. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. I have. I. I'm. I'm a beneficiary of someone going. I like you. I like your ambition. I like your passion. I'm gonna support you. Mm. I'm not gonna. No strings attached. Here you go. Here you go. The best thing that you can do is to give that back. Mm. Yeah. So okay. I try and give that back as much as I can, whether it's mm. here, whether it's back home yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's someone I want you to send a message to, but yeah. before I let you do that, as I wind up, is there anything you think we should have touched on that we did not? And where can people find you? Uh, people can find me in my 
Cream chilling. No. Jesus. How are you? I'm going to show you my People can find you in your cream chilling. In it. That's how many you live here. I'm going to show you my cream Okay, uh, so apart from your cream, in your cream chili, chili uh -huh. well, uh, okay. um, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh -huh. I don't think I don't think mm. there's anything that mm. um, we've not. Obviously, um, if anyone has questions yes. about any parts of my story. story that they do not understand, yeah. feel free to hit me up uh, mm. on my socials. Yes. Um, I I'll explain. Yes. Um, if you can come chill uh, at my crib as we talk about it as well, that's uh, that, that's good. That's workable as well. More love. Uh, yeah, they'll find us together. Yeah. <laughs> I am evil, but crazy, then it's a worker. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! I'm evil. You see, you see, hand on his ankles. He's going on the show, guys. That's where you can find him. Hey. Socials. Okay. Um, mm. uh, at Timmy Life everywhere. <laughs> that is T Y M I L Y F E. <laughs> If you fail to find me there, my crib chilling. Crib chilling. Yeah. Yeah. Keshi is gonna watch this. Oh, I know someday. she is. She loves it. She yeah. loves watching them. Yeah. So, uh, facing that camera, what would you want her to know? I think. I think Keshi, no, at the moment, she knows um, Dad is going to do everything that Dad can uh, in his power to make sure that you have the best life. Um, if you watch this when you're grown. Um, yeah, just be you, live your life. Dad is always going to be there if you need dad, you know where to find dad. Mm. Yeah, okay, in that's the crib chilling. in the oh, okay, yeah. fine. So, I think your next song should be in the crib chilling. Nah, that's for us only. Yeah, I, okay. I, I sing about love in the crib chilling. It's not about love, we could I be in the crib it. chilling. With love or with life. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. We could. I agree. I knew you were going to come around. Thank you. Where, Miss Tokyo Kubila Baba? My people, thank you so much for tuning. No, I honestly, jokes aside, I've had such an incredible conversation with you. Yeah. You are such a free spirit and it's beautiful. And thank you for sharing your story with us. It was not a must and you made time. I should tell people yesterday we were supposed to film this, but it did not happen, yet you still made time for it today. So I appreciate that. All the very best. Yeah. yeah Thank keep you for having me. It was, uh, it was a pleasure. You're, you're an inspiration yourself. Oh, um, come on now. To a lot of people. And uh, uh, it, it, it takes one to know one. It takes one to yeah, know one. So yeah. So when, when I had there was that opportunity, I was mm. not going to... To miss, it for, miss it for the world. Don't be missing yeah. my life for the world, you know. Yeah. 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 So thank you for having me. Yeah. I've had an incredible, incredible time. Me too. Um, a lot of people who maybe don't know you personally don't know how amazing you are. You, you, you're a free spirit to yourself. You, you're a very, very bubbly person. Oh wow! So someone who does not know you, if someone just looks at your pictures, they yeah. think, hey, th does that Lynn even laugh? Oh wow! But yeah, mm. you, 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 you're a vibe. Let me say that mm. you're, a, you're such a vibe. Yeah, you can yeah. say that again. Oh, you're such a vibe. Stop it! Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I love my job. I love you people. I just love that we are able to sit and have these conversations together. Yeah. For me, it's a big deal. And I look forward to us hanging out together, chilling the crib. The crib yeah. It's okay. Don't say another word. Oh. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's conversation. And honestly, I want to know which part of this story has greatly inspired you or greatly influenced you. And you can do this on the comment section. And as always, if you want to get Get hold this man away from the crib chilling his social handles are right here on the screen and as I continue to bring you guys amazing stories here in London let me know what are some of the conversations you are looking forward to hearing what are some of the questions you've been asking yourself that you need answers to thank you so much for tuning in as always my email is right there on the screen you want to share your story with me we could be coming to your town next you know I see us going to England US China 
Japan, Korea. No man is limited. Dreams are valid, guys. So just send us your story and we could be chilling with you in your hood for the next episode of LNS. I don't get to do this alone. A huge thank you to my legendary camera person and director Edwin Ochieng. Easy my lines nikakuwa na zipik. So I hope he has also learned something in today's conversation. And of course, we are here with Men's Desk producer and our amazing, our amazing friend, Joshua J. Karanja. And not forgetting the woman who has made all this possible, our amazing Lydia Tet Olet and our team at Tap Tap for coming through and making sure we continue bringing you stories that have the ability to impact lives. My name is Lynn. Till next time, I'm gonna go have some water. Bye.